Behind me is Bilstein Australia's brand new 300 series Toyota Land Cruiser. And behind that is the Lost City here in Lithgow. Now, unlike a lot of 300 series reviews you might have seen in the past, Toyota haven't paid us anything for this, and it's not a media car that I have to give the keys back to. Plus, this is one of the first ones in the country to be modified. It's got the Bilstein two inch lift kit and some brand new 33 inch tires fitted. And well, we're gonna put it through its paces and give you an unbiased, hardcore off-road test on some of Lithgow's toughest tracks. On the wave, my own wave, can't stop my shot. In the lane, my own lane, can't stop my ground. Can't stop my ground. 40 yard in the V12 and like 1.5. And 19, a clear 19 in a month, no lie. This particular spec of 300 series is the GXL and there are a few features that set it aside from the lower spec, the GX. Those are 18 inch wheels, bigger brakes, a better infotainment system inside the vehicle and even the front factory fitted LED fog lights. Now this car, as it sits here with these tyres and a full tank of fuel with no people inside it, is 2,500 kilos with a GVM of 3,280 kilos. What does that mean? Well, a similar issue to the 200 series is present in that it doesn't leave you a lot of payload to mess around with. So a GVM upgrade is going to be something that you definitely want to look at. The engine bay of the 300 series, where all the magic happens. Now this is that 3.3 litre V6 twin turbo diesel motor made it up to that unique 10 speed automatic transmission. And I've got to say, it's pretty interesting under here. Not only is this probably the cleanest engine bay in the country at the moment, but it also looks quite easy to work on, which is exciting for a lot of us DIYers out there. I do have to say though that real estate for accessories is at a, uh, is at a bit of a premium in here. And if you wanted to mount a second battery, you're simply just not going to be able to. The airbox location gives this car 700 mils of weighting depth. Uh, obviously with a snorkel, that's going to be drastically improved. And with the suspension that we fitted, it adds about 50 mil to that. So about 750 mil of weighting depth. Toyota also haven't put a fuel filter up here under the bonnet. It's actually mounted at the back next to the spare tire under the car on the chassis rail, which is interesting, but you still uh, have the ability to hand pump the fuel filter if needed. Another important thing that's going on under here is that both the turbos are mounted in the valley of the V6 and that traditional top mount intercooler that we've seen on all those D4D V8 turbo diesel motors is gone and Toyota have now opted for two uh, front mount intercoolers mounted either side of the radiator in the front bar. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with what's going on under here and I've got to say this thing drives a lot better than some tuned 200 series I've driven. So, Toyota, well done. Just touching on the weight savings again, Toyota have done a lot of things differently to help bring the total weight of this vehicle down to that 2,500 kilo mark, including alloy uprights in the front suspension and using a lot more aluminium throughout the body of the vehicle, roof guards and doors to help shave that weight. Plus, they've gone away with metal underbody protection and put plastic in there. So you are gonna wanna look at upgrading that if you're gonna take this bad boy off-road properly. Now, like I mentioned at the start of this video, this car is one of the first modified ones in the country that's going to be tested off-road. And those modifications include the suspension and the tyres on this 300 series. We fitted a brand new set of Falcon 33-inch tyres to the factory 18-inch wheels. Now, I can't state 18-inch wheels enough because the bigger brakes that the GXL and above models have mean that the smallest rim you can run on this car is an 18-inch rim. The clearance between the caliper and the inside of the barrel of the wheel is minuscule. I'm talking less than 10 mil. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, the suspension in this 300 series is modified by the team at Bilstein Australia. It's got the Bilstein B60 60mm monotube 2 inch lift kit in it, which is absolutely fantastic. An improvement over the 200 series is the new 300 series bottom bush at the bottom of that strut, which has drastically helped the NVH of the vehicle. Now we all know 200 struggled a little bit with wind and road noise, and even though the 300 series has got more aluminium in it than previous models, it has helped drastically inside the cab, and it is dead quiet in there. Now like I mentioned, this is a 2 inch lift which has not only helped us fit a bigger tyre in this wheel arch, but it's also helped us gain a massive amount of drooping articulation in this vehicle. Plus, you're getting a huge 60mm monotube bore shock, which is going to help with the ride quality as well. Uh, a bit of a step coming up. We've got it in low four first gear in the manual mode and we're using Toyota's factory fitted crawl control here. They give you this big rotary dial to help control the speed at which you crawl, which is an exciting function of this model. Now being the GXL, it doesn't have front and rear lockers. Whether that's gonna be a drawback, we'll find out here. It seems to be handling it pretty well so far. You can feel the traction control working, which is exciting. We're just going to come around this big sort of ledge. You 
a couple of big sort of wombat holes up ahead, so keen to see what this new Bilstein suspension does. The control you get with this automatic, I tell you what, makes me want to put an auto in the 80. I know, you think you're in a Warringah Mall parking lot and someone's BMW is about to crash into you, but it's all going to be okay. How precious are you about your mud flaps? <laughs> not, not very? Good. That was the correct answer. Very close to this wall. You know what? This feels really stable. I'm enjoying this a lot. I reckon that wider wheelbase over the 200 and the fact that they dropped the motor lower in the engine bay is helping this car a lot. Crawl control's a weapon. How good's that? Crawl control, sending power to the wheels that need it. And it just did that. In any car that didn't have twin lockers or this crawl control, you wouldn't have driven that. Epic. All right, so this next little bit is a downhill sort of off camber section. This is where the crawl control is really gonna work because it's controlling the brakes and the drive, sending it to where it needs it. So it's not gonna get out of hand. And because unlike something like the Amarok with that eight speed and no low range, because this has got the 10 speed but still has a low range, I've got so much control. Finally to your left. Sam line would have been on its side like 100 k's an hour. This next challenge is one of the gnarliest things you would take any four-wheel drive down. Last time I was here, I drove it in the 80, chopped four-inch lift 37s, and it swallowed the car like it was nothing and I'm about to do it in a $110,000 one of only a handful in the country 300 series to say I'm nervous is an understatement this is going to be a proper test it's either going to make it or break it That's the crawl control taking over. I'm just gonna turn the crawl control up a little bit because it's just locking the brakes up a little bit more than I would uh, like. All right. This is just all about wheel placement through here. We're gonna really test out this Bilstein suspension. That wheel down there it is. This is where Yeah. It's hard because you just can't see. 
in such a big car, you're driving blind and it's just, it's very balanced, but it has got a very tall body, if that makes sense. So, I'm, I'm just watching the, uh, watching the lean over on the top of the roof line here, because this bank's pretty damn close. See if that crawl control can get us out of this. This is where lockers would be great. If you get the Sahara or the GR model, factory front and rear lockers. Big wheel lift in the back. You can hear, you can actually hear it if you listen carefully. All those sounds, the ABS, the traction, sending power and brakes to the wheels that don't need the drive. I've got to be honest, this system, left, left. Left. this system is one of the best factory fitted off-road capability systems I've ever worked with. Just the grip and the confidence it gives you are intense. More than probably Bill Steiner hoping to give me. Is that back wheel off the ground? Yeah, oh! Hi, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Oh, that feels better. How's that looking? Feels heaps better, eh? <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell! This crawl control boogies, baby! Fuck me! Sliding, is it? It's good when you can touch the rut out the driver's window. Out there. <laughs> oh, there's a few hard in mouth moments, I'm not going to lie to you boys. When Paul said, oh, you've done this before? Yeah, it's going to be fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> so I spent a little bit of time inside the 300 interior, and I've got to say, it is a nice place to be. The GXL gets a couple of nice little trimmings and features, uh, but it does fall it does fall a little bit short of something like the Sahara uh, or the GR. You get a lovely sort of leather trim door cards dash area, um, leather trim wheel with really nice functionality. Um, you know, all the buttons are easy to reach and that kind of thing. You get a lovely nine inch touchscreen infotainment system, which the GR, uh, sorry, the GX doesn't uh, have the same system. Uh, which is good and you also have full wide car play and that sort of thing which is pretty standard in a car of 2022 or newer in terms of the electronics package in here it is a little bit basic you do get blind spot monitoring and stuff which is nice and that 
that's a, a, a GXL upgrade. Um, but in terms of heads up display, heated seats, electronic seat adjustment, anything like that, it just doesn't have it. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that. That being said, functions like the driving mode select, uh, the crawl control, the multi-terrain systems, the electronic range selection between high and low, all these things I think have been refined since they came across from the 200 series. And this, uh, the dash that I'm looking at here has got a lovely uh, immersive sort of screen in between the two analog gauges, which helps with all the information. You can cycle through a whole bunch of different menus. And if you're wondering how to turn the parking sensors off, you do it from the wheel. It's been shit me off for fucking four hours. <laughs> but overall, I'm pretty impressed. Would I have liked some more electronics in here for a $110,000 Toyota? Yep, but overall, pretty soaked. Well, that's a comprehensive walk around and off-road review of the brand new 300 series GXL Toyota Land Cruiser. And I've got to say, I am in love with this thing. What a weapon and a huge improvement over the 200 series previous generations. I can't wait to do more to this car. Now, if you guys do want to see specific things done to it, leave a comment below and let us know what you'd like to see. And I'll do my best to make it happen. And if you do want to see more videos of the 300 series, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because I've got some pretty exciting stuff coming. Anyway, I better get this back to Bill Sen HQ before I start asking questions. See you guys. Thirty-two eighty. So what does that mean? Well, it's still useless. You are going to need the Bill Stein GVM upgrade if you want to do shit to this fucking thing. Sam, talking shit. Again. Again. Who did it? Was it that or was it me? You'll never know. Oh, go on. <laughs> oh, go on. <laughs> Twist my rubber arm. I'm going right. <laughs> Stop beeping them, you fuck. Cut out right. This thing, last time I was here, swallowed my 80s 37s like they were nothing. We're about to take 110. Hurry up before I change my mind, please. <laughs> <laughs> can someone can someone go fan Paul? He's having a fucking he's having a moment. Well, I want to put your belt on Jados just in case shit gets wild. Don't oh. go forward. Hiya. Can we get more cameras on this? How do I turn that? Other audio. We got three audio. photographers, two videographers, two GoPros. And Fred on the phone, we're, we're, we're ready. No pressure. For the insurance claim, that is. <laughs> oh, you camera. Oh, I did the thing. <laughs>